What is going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a fifth year interventional radiology resident physician. On today's video, we are going to be talking about every single job I've had leading up to becoming a doctor and how much money I made in each of those jobs as well. So let's go ahead, get into it. So I'm going to break down each set of jobs by kind of where I was at in my life at the time. So we'll first start off with high school. So during my junior and senior year of high school, I started my first job I've ever had in my entire life, and I was a lifeguard. So it seemed like a nice fit for me, seeing as I spent most of my time in a pool anyways as a competitive swimmer my entire life. I would spend my mornings at the pool, and then I would go hang out at the pool with my friends, and then go back to swim practice later on that evening. So I was pretty much always at the pool. I knew everybody at the pool and I just did a lifeguard certification class and became a lifeguard. While I was a lifeguard, I believe I made about $8 an hour. There were no bonuses or anything like that, but just pure $8 an hour. I think, I don't even know how many times I would work a week, maybe three or four hour shifts here and there a week, sometimes long six, eight hour shifts on the weekends. But, but I mean, I wasn't pulling in any serious cash, let's just put it that way. I did, however, lifeguard at a country club near my house and we did get free food every single day. So I became friends with the chefs and we would get, I remember I would always eat the uh, chicken Caesar wraps and chicken tenders. I would always get those for some reason, delicious. So job number two, during my junior and senior year as well, I was also a pool boy. <laughs> but what I mean by that is, I wasn't a pool boy in the sense that I would come in every morning early and mess with the chlorine levels or filter the pool and all that stuff. I was actually working for my aunt and uncle at the time. They were property developers and they had this huge residential development with a pool and they were overly generous in giving me a job, job. So it was like a huge neighborhood pool with probably 200 plus houses. So I did this job during the summer and in the mornings I would drive to the pool at like 7 or 8 a.m. Literally just go up and unlock the lock on the gate, leave it open all day and then at like 7 p.m. or whenever the pool closed, I would go over there, drive 20 minutes again and literally just lock the gate. I did this five days a week and somehow, I think they paid me like $20 a day to do it. So I would end up getting like $100 cash at the end of the week. So thank you, Aunt Jody and Uncle Robert for being so generous. I still haven't forgotten that. So my third job was actually at the end of freshman year of college, in which I came back to the first country club that I used to lifeguard at. And I ended up being a bartender and server because I was really interested in learning bartending at the time. If you watched my last video when I made the sangria, I mentioned shortly that I, I have this huge passion for bartending. I don't know why, I loved how they would flip the bottles around their back and stuff. And I always wanted to be a bartender, no idea why. But I learned everything there that summer and I bartended as much as humanly possible. And I probably made like $100 a day, which as you know, a 19 year old, that's pretty good money. So I actually kind of double dipped as well because I was the summer league swim coach for the same country club that whole entire summer. So that was job number four. So that job actually worked out pretty well because the swim practices were in the morning and I think it lasted six to eight weeks or so. I would do the swim practices in the morning and then literally just walk down the uh, parking lot and put on a nice shirt and start bartending for the rest of the day because it was a country club and most of the uh, golfers and such would use the bartending services during the day, and at night, not so much. So my job four was a swim coach with my good friend, Lisa, who also went to college with me, and I also went to high school with her as well. And she gave me that job because obviously I was a swimmer and that's kind of right in my wheelhouse. I actually really liked it. I love kind of playing with the kids and giving them practices and I don't know, just kind of hanging out with them and being goofy all the time. But uh, they, it paid pretty well. I think it paid, 
$3,000 for the whole summer. But it was a pretty big commitment because you have practice every single day and then you also had swim meets once a week. And then after the regular season was over, we had the state championship. So it was probably a good eight weeks of solid hard work, but you were rewarded for it. And sometimes if you did a good job, you would get a bonus, which was good as well. So that summer I was making about $3,000 as a swim coach and then making $100 a day as a bartender slash server in the afternoons and evenings. So I was working nonstop, but made pretty good money that summer. Also, one thing I didn't mention is that a lot of swim coaches at the time were doing swim lessons or giving private swim lessons to some of the kids on the team. And that just wasn't my thing. I did, it was very lucrative, but I gave one swim lesson to one like eight year old girl and I was so impatient, I just couldn't even handle it. It was only a 30 minute session, but, but the kid like wouldn't listen to me and just wouldn't do what I was telling them. And I just don't have the patience for it. And I never did it again, even though it paid like $50 for a half hour, which is pretty solid and it's very minimal work, but it just wasn't my thing. So that could have been job number five-ish, four and a half, but I only did one session, so it's a wash. Now let's talk about my favorite job, job number five, which like I said, was a bartender in college. The other bartending slash server job was at a country club, but I'll separate this one because this was a bartending job at a real bar and only a bar. There was no food there. I would usually work uh, maybe Friday and Saturday night, sometimes like a random Wednesday night. And in the summer months when I wasn't in competition mode for swimming, I would work couple nights a week as well. This was by far my favorite job ever. Like I've said many, many times before, the whole point of the job is basically just to socialize and have fun. So even though I was working and couldn't go out, all of my friends would just come to my bar and I would just hang out with them all night and serve them drinks all night and get paid for it. So basically it didn't really feel like a job to me per se. It was kind of just like having fun. So I was probably making like maybe $150 a night, which wasn't that bad actually. And some nights, depending on how busy it was, you could make $200, $250 a night, which, you know, when you're a college student, that's pretty good money. My rent was only like $350 a month. So I could effectively make my rent payment in two days of work, which was crazy. And it was fun, didn't even seem like work. And I loved everybody I bartended with. We were all friends, it was, it was the best job ever. So at least I have something to fall back to if this whole physician thing doesn't work out. All right, now let's fast forward to after college. So job number six, I think now, was the first job I had after graduating college. That was working for a property management company as a leasing specialist. I don't really know how I fell into this job, but my whole job basically was to get people to rent apartments. And I didn't really enjoy the job whatsoever. I was kind of just doing it because someone offered me a job and I knew them and it was a job. It was really kind of easy. Um, I didn't get paid hardly at all, but I only did it for a year, so it wasn't too bad. So it was, I think I got paid $15 an hour with a college degree and you would get bonused on productivity and I think a uh, bonus was like $100 for every lease you signed or something like that. I can't even remember it. I've said on prior videos that I just didn't feel like I was using myself to my full potential when I was at that job. I felt like I would wake up and I was just losing intelligence as the day went on. I don't know, I just didn't feel like I was doing anything with my life when I had that job. So that's kind of what got me on the path to medicine. I figured there had to be a better way. There had to be something I was actually interested in and felt like I was utilizing my brain every day. And eventually I looked into medicine and I did a whole video on how I kind of fell into medicine and all that stuff. So I'll spare you all the details. So that was my job. I think the salary total was like $48,000 a year if you include everything. So I guess for a brand new job straight out of college for a 21 year old, wasn't that bad, but it's not the best. It was just average. So once I quit that job, uh, once I found out I was going back to medical school and going back to do my pre-medicine prerequisite courses, I ended up volunteering a lot in the ER down at the big hospital where I grew up. 
And I was there pretty much like as many nights as I could. I would work overnight because that's when the craziest stuff would come in. So I obviously wasn't getting paid for that job, but that was, but that experience was second to none. And then while I was working there, I met the volunteer coordinator who kind of set all of our volunteering up. She set me up with the Epic implementation team because the hospital I was volunteering with at the time was getting outfitted for Epic or the electronic medical record system. So job number seven or eight, I forgot what I'm on now, was a job as an Epic implementer, which means I would basically just help doctors and physicians kind of go through Epic and help them kind of integrate and learn Epic when we first released it into the hospital. So that was like a contract kind of job. I don't even remember what I got paid for it, not that much, but I only worked for like one or two months. So the last and final job I had before starting this whole path towards becoming a physician was an analyst in New York City. So I was a management analyst in New York City and my job description, basically I gathered and analyzed data and basically my job was to a lot square footage in the hospital based on productivity of our PhDs. So again, it wasn't that exciting, but it got me paid. We got paid, I think my salary was $55,000 a year, which was fantastic. I mean, I didn't really mind. I was living in New York City at the time. That's not a lot of money whatsoever for New York City, but it was enough for me to enjoy it as a young 20 something year old. All right, so that is officially every single job I've worked in my entire life before becoming a physician. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Turn on those post notifications so you are notified when I post a new video, which is usually about once or twice every week. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video.